uh, to you. Thank God for you tonight. Thank God for your presence as we've gathered together tonight on this Tuesday night for our weekly Bible study. And uh, we're grateful to God for another expression of his love. And uh, we're ready to begin tonight. So we're now in the capable hands of our wonderful music staff. Uh, starting this Sunday will be National Musician Appreciation Week, as well as Sunday will be Sister Gisette Cookie Whitaker Simmons' birthday. Amen. So, all right, this time we'll have them bless us with a selection. Behind us, 
what you need to tell him. I told Satan, he better get behind one more time. I told Satan, hey, get thee behind victory today. Oh, yes it is. It's my Yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. You got to start speaking victory. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Don't have no doubt. Start speaking it. Let's go to God in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for another privilege to come together to worship your name and to study your word and gain insight for living oh god we thank you for the refreshment of that medley of songs that reminded us amen that uh, uh, we have the victory and that we have assurance so whatever comes against us we know that we're in your hands and the word says you say, in who's in your hand, no man can pluck them out. So, Lord, we thank you that we're in your hands. We pray, oh, Heavenly Father, and we thank you for the praise report. Brother Derek Abram and the praise report from Sister Marva Barnett. And then, Lord, those who stand in the need of prayer on tonight. Lord, we lift them up to you name by name and need by need. Heavenly Father, you know where they are. You know what they're facing. And Lord, we thank you that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. We're thankful that there's nothing that can separate us from your love. And we thank you. And through your love, we have the victory. Now give us insight understanding and clarity as we share your word tonight in Jesus name we pray amen God bless you tonight we are continuing in our series of lessons from the 33 laws of stewardship and uh, we've been studying the book the 33 laws of stewardship from Sutherland and Nowry and tonight we are on the 18th law of stewardship, the 18th law of stewardship. And uh, glad to see you, Minister Thibodeau, viewing and praying for you and your wife. Brother Darrell, I know it's been a tough day for you, but hang in there, brother. Hang in there. The 18th law of stewardship is the law of zealous readiness. The law of zealous readiness readiness the law of zealous readiness zealous stewardship this law says spreads like a powerful contagion zealous stewardship spreads like a powerful contagion let me begin our lesson this way his name was Simon but we know him better by the descriptor that follows his name. We know him as Simon the Zealot. Unlike his famous namesake, Simon Peter, who became the most prominent Deacon Harper of the Twelve Apostles, Simon the Zealot is virtually Sister Gray, unknown to us. Not a single word uh, he, he ever said or a single deed that he ever did is recorded uh, in the scriptures. The only thing the Bible tells us about Simon is that he was a zealot. Yet in this one potent word we can see a man with blazing and flaming enthusiasm 
like a peephole that's in a wooden fence through which we can view a vast landscape. This word zealot, Sister Gloria Adams, reveals a great deal to us. Thank you, Sister Janet, for joining us. In Jesus' day, the zealots were loosely, a loosely structured organization of what uh, we would probably call today uh, guerrilla fighters. Uh, their whole mission in the first century was uh, to encourage and influence uh, the Jews uh, uh, and, and those in Judea to rebel against Roman, the Roman Empire. They were uh, fiercely committed to liberating uh, Palestine and uh, from that tyranny of the Roman Empire and and those who had joined with the zealots had to go through uh, a conversion experience, Sister Kenyatta. They, 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 they had to uh, sell themselves out for the cause. And as a zealot, Simon had to be a certain kind of person. Uh, Sister Ali Marie Willis, he had to be an idealist. Uh, thinking that his side could actually win. He had to be not only an idealist, Sister Vicky, but he had to be a visionary. Sister Ireland looking ahead to the liberation of his people, and he also had to be sincere. Sincere in believing that what he was doing was right in that I'm, I'm just divine defining zealot for you he had to he had to be sincere and really believe that his cause was right and he had to be dedicated so Brenda Bell had to be dedicated so dedicated that he would willingly give up his life for the struggle Simon the zealot but when Simon put his faith in Jesus and accepted Jesus as his Messiah, he abandoned his old commitment and embraced uh, a completely new one. Have you ever known someone who was really out there in the world? I mean, there wasn't a party that they didn't know about. There wasn't a party that they weren't going to be at. Maybe some of you who are looking at me and watching me, maybe you were that person. And you had that kind of enthusiasm and zeal about you that if you knew it was going down on the north side, the south side, the east side, or the west side, whether it was in Greens Point or Acres Home, whether it was in Sunnyside or Third Ward or Fifth Ward or wherever it may be, even in Katy, if you knew that it was a party going on, even all the way down to Galveston, not only were you going to be there, because they say on the invitation, be there or be square. Not only were you going to be there, but you were going to put the word out and tell all of your friends that it's going down tonight. And then something happened. You had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And, 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 and you didn't stop dancing. You just changed partners. And so now, can't nobody beat you with saying, hey, there's a revival going on. Hey, there's a service going on. Hey, come on, come to church with me. Simon was zealous in what he did before and what he believed before he knew Jesus. And guess what he did? He brought that same enthusiasm with him. It's a shame, fellow Christians, brothers and sisters, that when you full of fire for the devil and then you get on the Lord's side and you act like a wet blanket, you ought to bring that same fire. That's why the old folks would say you must have 
that fire and Holy Ghost, that burning thing that keeps the prayer wheel turning, that kind of religion that you cannot conceal. It makes you move. It makes you shout. It makes you cry when it's real. Talking about Simon the Zealot. He was zealous. But when he met Jesus, he now uh, changed his enthusiasm for the cause. And now he put his enthusiasm, Minister Thibodeau, into Christ. <laughs> he found something more important than the cause. Indeed, he found the one whom the Jewish people had for centuries longed for. He found the Christ. He met with the true liberator. And nothing would ever be the same. Simon did not cease to be the impassioned person he was before. Rather, he discovered a new focus for zealousness and a new focus for his passion. You ought to get excited hmm? for serving the Lord. Huh? Anybody here excited that they're on the Lord's side? Huh? Sometimes it tickled me in, in when we had, we used to have our worship services and, and, and we sang the song, get up if you're on the Lord's side. Get, 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 get up if you're on the Lord's side. I'm on the Lord's side. Huh? And I can understand folk who may have some arthritis in the hips and maybe, you know, of a certain age where they can't get up real fast without getting dizzy. But if you can get up and if you're on the Lord's side, you ought to stand up. Amen. When, oh, Lord, come on, somebody help me here. And so Simon was zealous. He didn't cease to be that impassionate person, but rather he, he put it towards what he was doing now for Christ. And from that point forward, his life was dedicated to service and, listen, to stewardship as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, according to the first century historians and according, according to uh, uh, Josephus and other historians, Simon ultimately gave his life for Christ by dying as a martyr, uh, as a martyr for the Lord. Not a martyr, a martyr for the Lord. Uh, it is said by historians, and we don't have the biblical record of that because all we know was his name and that he was an apostle of Jesus, but the historians write that he preached the gospel in Egypt. Not only did he preach the gospel in Egypt, but he said he then went and joined Thaddeus and then preached the gospel in Persia. And he was so committed and zealous for the cause of Christ that he was willing to give up his life for it. And guess what? He died. He died as a martyr. Uh, historians say, he was sawed in half, cut in half with a saw. But guess what? He took that zeal all the way to death. Huh? Here, here's what we sing in church, and y'all help me. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord, and I promised him that I would serve him till I get tired. Serve him till my feet hurt. Sell them till I got arthritis. Serve them till my, my children, you know, get out of the house. No, I'm going to serve him till I die. Because I'm on the battlefield, right? Sometimes you got to leave your friends and kindred. Sometimes all you got is your Bible in your hand. But you promise. Huh? Don't make a promise to the Lord that you know you're not going to keep. I promised him that I would serve him till I die. Simon personified the law of zealous readiness, which is described by Paul in the first uh, uh, two verses of 2 Corinthians chapter 9. You can put that up there, Kevin. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 1 and 2 says... Paul, and I'm reading from the New International Version, the NIV Version. He says, there's no need for me to write to you about this service to the saints. For I know your eagerness to help. And I've been boasting about it to the Macedonians. 
telling them that since last year, you in, in Acacia uh, were ready to give. And he says, the NIV says, and your enthusiasm has stirred most of them to action. Don't you know that if you get excited about serving the Lord, you get excited about coming to church, you get excited about the work of the Lord, people will feed off of your excitement. It reminds me, you know, and, and uh, I watched the Astros win uh, today, but it reminded me when I look at football and, and, and the sports now that they don't have fans in the stands. But, but anybody ever been to a game, baseball game, a football game, or basketball game? There may be people watching me. Y'all act like y'all ain't been nothing to nothing, even if it was high school or junior high. All right? Got to go back that far. All right. Pee Wee, Little League, something. All right? But every now and then, you know, in the stands, people will start doing the wave. Huh? One section would get up and lift their hands up and, and then put them down. And then the next section, lift their hands up, put them down. And then it just go all the way around the stand. And it might take a little while before it finally catch on. It might just be one or two people throw it up. And then it, but after a while, you can get the whole stand. And it just goes around, right? And everybody's doing the wave. We got kind of got tired of the wave, you know, at games and felt it was kind of silly. But now, boy, if they ever let us get back to them stadiums, you know, I'm going to be ready. I'm going to stand up by myself. Woo! Huh? But just think about it. If you did, if you stood up and began to shout and make a joyful noise to the Lord when you come into his gates with thanksgiving and you enter in his courts with praise, huh? when you're thankful unto him and blessed, guess what? It, it becomes contagious. I hate to keep talking about the old church, but, but some of you can remember huh, when folk would get happy on this side and, and start shouting on this side and, and pretty soon the other folk on the other side start popping up like popcorn and, and then it get in the middle section and then there's an enthusiasm and there's an excitement going on. I ought to not be the only one excited to be in relationship with the Lord. When you think about what God has done for you, Huh? You ought not need to be prompted to get excited. Huh? It says, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for punch, no, no, no. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, that means you. Your soul ought to cry out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Huh? I wasn't always that good and I ain't all that good now, you know, but I thank God. That he saved me, right? He picked me up. Hmm? Turned me right. <laughs> huh? And I'm on the Lord's side, right? Yeah, yeah. Godly zeal is a powerful force which has a contagious effect on other believers, right? That's why if you're on the greeters committee or ministry huh, or the ushers committee, huh, you're, you, you're the first line, huh? If you messed up in your spirit, huh? if you got a bad corn and a bad bunion, huh? if, if you're not excited about being at the house of the Lord, if you're not excited about being on the Lord's side, when the, and you're the first line that people going to see, they're going to be messed up all the way. When the Corinthians gave eagerly and enthusiastically, it motivated the Macedonians to do likewise. To be zealously ready as a servant and a steward of Jesus Christ is to live with a heightened sense of responsiveness to God's leading. It's not to be fanatical, but, but, but it is to be radical. Let me tell you something, because true Christianity is radical. Huh? Jesus was radical, right? He took a few, huh? Unlearn some, some, some not highly respected people and individuals, and he upset the course of human history. Christianity is radical. It's radical because it's a life lived in radical opposition to the forces of this world, the forces of the flesh, and the forces of the devil. It's radical to be a Christian. True Christianity belongs neither to the left, and I know it's election time, and I just want to remind you, on the first day of early voting, which is October 13th, I want everybody who's listening to me, run to the polls, get in line before 7 o'clock. 
and vote early. We're going to overwhelm them on the first day of voting so there'll be no doubt. We're going to take some souls to the polls, right? But listen, to, listen, to be zealous is to be radical because true Christianity neither belongs to the left. I know you watching the commercials, nor to the right in the political realm. But true Christianity belongs neither to conservative nor liberal in the social realm. True Christianity is not of this earth, but it's of heaven. It's not temporal, but it's eternal. It's not bound by natural, but it's lived within the supernatural boundaries of God's grace. True Christianity belongs to another level. It belongs to another dimension. It is a life on a different plane, right? No higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer and my aim is higher ground. It's in the song book called Higher Ground. It's in the hymnal. It's in this one. Sometimes Christians become fanatical, going off on tangents or giving their time and energy to causes rather than to Christ. And such fanatical behavior is usually prompted either by two things, a misunderstanding of God's word or a misapplication of God's truth. And it also can be based on sin, some area of sin in your life that has created a need for a spiritual smoke screen. Because some of us ain't living right, but we figure if we start doing right, hmm, we can throw up a smoke screen. Huh? Huh? And folks say, oh, look, they're such a good person, but we, we, you know, we just throwing up a smoke screen. We, we get behind a cause. And it's never about a cause. Huh? Your salvation, your relationship with God is about Christ, not a cause. But the ze to be zealously, but the zealously ready steward is motivated by the pure desire to use every resource to please God and to fulfill his will. I'm going to get to living the laws. I'm still on my introduction. The law of zealous readiness confirms that enthusiasm is a good thing if it's directed toward godly, a godly purpose, right? The purpose of fanaticism is the cause uh, it is the cause or the activity or the ideal itself, but the purpose of Christian zeal is the person, is the person of Christ himself. Hmm? If you're excited about anything as a Christian, you ought to be excited about Christ. Hmm? Not excited about you can wear a hat or a suit or some gator shoes, huh? Or that you go to this church or that church or your choir sings this good, your choir sings that good, you know, your preacher is this good. No, no, it's about Christ, right? And it's always been about Christ. And we've been forced now, everybody, I don't care how, how large your church edifice was, I don't care how grand your choir was, I don't care how well of a preacher you were. We're all, huh? Huh? Standing before a camera or phone now. Huh? We, we, we don't have all of those things that we thought were essential. And we find out they weren't really essential. But guess what? Christ is essential. Huh? The songwriter says this, Christ is all. Huh? He's all the world to me. It's not about a cause, but it's about Christ, the person of Christ. John 10 and 9 says, Christ says himself, I am the gate. He categorically said, I'm the gate. I'm the door. I'm the only way. Huh? The essence of Christianity is not a cause or a philosophy or a religion or an idea. It's a person. And who, who that person is, is Jesus. And what he's done, and then why he is. Those are the things that truly matter. All right, let's, let's look at, let's look at, let's go to the lesson. You can put that up, Kevin. We can go to the lesson now. The law of zealous Readiness. Let's live out these laws, and I'm almost through. Zealous stewardship, you got a handout. Zealous stewardship spreads like a powerful contagion, right? In the context of biblical stewardship, zealousness is a Christ-centered passion to give everything for his sake. 
It's an all-encompassing, enfolding all that one is capable of giving, whether it's your money, your time, your influence, your help, your counsel, or a thousand and one other things. The motive behind the giving is the indwelling love of Christ. Here's a couple of more songs. Let me throw them out at you. I surrender all. Huh? To, be a, to be a zealous steward means that you surrender all. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. In his presence daily live all to Jesus. I surrender. Huh? Worldly pleasures all forsaken, right? I surrender all, right? And then the psalmist says, and you can write this down if you're taking copious notes in Psalms 116, verses 12 through 17. Verse 12 says, what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me, right? Huh? Zealous, be zealous, be zealous. It's a Christ-centered passion. In 2 Corinthians 5 and 14, Paul says, for Christ's love compels us. Huh? It constrains us, right? It compels us. Huh? Whereas the religious fanatics of today's world are motivated by anger, fear, or guilt, the believer is compelled by love. And having been set free from the penalty of sin, we now uh, are, are enabled to live triumphant over the power of sin. In this regard, a zealous Christian experiences a victory that is profoundly spiritual, right? You may still be, huh, physically in the condition that you're in, but spiritually you can be lifted up, right? You can lift up your heads, O ye gates, even in the midst of what you're going through, right? Huh? Because you can trust in God. And though I'm in the fire, God says I won't get burned. If I'm in the water, God says I won't drown. Huh? But most of all, you need to make sure that you are in him. And if I'm in Christ, doesn't matter if there's hell breaking out, if a storm is raging. What we call a storm and what the disciples call a storm when they want to see, you know what Jesus called it? Peace. <coughs> Uh, they just thought, don't you care that we perish? The storm is raging. And Jesus, what they were calling the storm, Jesus said, peace, be still. <laughs> huh? To be zealous, to be zealous, to be zealous. The zealous Christian experiences a victory that is profoundly spiritual. The first point, just two points in this first one, and we just about, we just about done. Uh, Sister June, thank you for being a part. And Sister Cynthia Ambush. See, only... Christ as the cause. If you're going to live the law of zealous readiness, you got to see only Christ as the cause. When Simon joined the zealots, he probably had no reservations. Most likely he gave himself wholly to the cause. But then he learned of the one greater than any cause, the Lord Jesus. And still a zealous man, Simon just, here's what he did. He just redirected his zeal to serve the only one worth serving. His instructions came directly from the Lord who, who taught him what it meant to be a disciple. He heard it when Jesus said, if anyone, in Mark chapter 8 verse 34, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Sister Linda James, if anyone come after me, right? Any one of you who does not give up everything in Luke chapter 14 and 33 has not and cannot be my disciple. And he was listening when the Lord said, I tell you the truth. No one who left home or brother or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age and in the age to come, eternal life. That's Mark 10, 29 through 30. Simon was listening. We said he was zealous. He was listening. And he took the words to heart, as indeed you and I should. The second, and we're through. You got to count only Christ as dear. Huh? You got to count only Christ as dear. Huh? How dear is Christ to you? Hmm? How important is he to you? Huh? I can do without a whole lot of things. And I'm going to be honest, I can live without a whole lot of people. Huh? You don't believe it? Let someone you love die. Hmm? You still here, aren't you? Huh? I I'm not diminishing the hurt and the pain and the missing them, the absence that they've left. But listen, you got to count only Christ as dear. 
Huh? Because if you know they were in Christ, huh? guess what? You're going to see them again. You got to count only Christ as dear. As we put into practice the laws of stewardship, there's an ever-growing realization that these are laws of discipleship as well. For stewardship is inextricably linked to discipleship. To be a disciple, and a disciple is just a learner, is to be a steward. And to be a steward is to be a disciple. In both respects, as disciples and as stewards, our priority is not ourselves, but our priority is the Lord. Forsaking everything else, we count only Christ as dear. With zealous readiness, we say with Paul, as he said in Acts chapter 2, verse 24, I count my life worth nothing to me, if only I may finish the race and complete the task that the Lord Jesus Christ has given me. The task of testifying to the gospel of his grace. The law of zealous readiness. Let me close it this way. I give myself away. I give myself away so that you can use me. Lord, my life is in your hands. Your desires revealed in me. Take my heart, take my life as a living sacrifice. All my dreams, all my plans, Lord, I place them in your hands. I give myself away. I give myself away so that you can use me. Are you zealous for the Lord? Are you excited to be in him? Are you excited to know that I am his and he is mine? The law of zealous readiness. God bless you. If you're not in relationship with Jesus Christ and you heard something that has motivated you and prompted you to enter into a deeper, more committed relationship with him, right now as she sings, you can do that right where you are. You can say, Lord, I, I give myself to you. I'm a sinner and I want to be saved. Come into my heart and save me. If you're backslidden, you can say, Lord, I repent. I'm coming back to you. I want to be on fire for you. I want to come to a greater knowledge of you. I want to go closer to you. I want to be more committed to you. As she sings, you can reflect on that today. You can pray right where you are and ask him to help you. Oh, to Jesus, I surrender all. Duh!
surrender oh amen amen come on celebrate god celebrate god amen 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 have you surrendered all to him yes i surrender all god bless you and god keep you may his face forever shine upon you let me let me make a few announcements uh, this Sunday will be the first Sunday, first Sunday in the month of October. Amen. And uh, we'll have our drive through Lord's Supper on this Sunday morning between 11 and 11.45. So if you'd like to receive the Lord's Supper, please uh, make sure that you're on the campus uh, between 11 and 11.45. Some of you missed last first Sunday, and I missed you driving by. This affords me an opportunity to see the ones that I don't see because we've been uh, not having uh, in-person worship. So don't deny me the privilege of seeing you and you seeing me. So come by on Sunday between 11 and 11.45, and I'll serve you the Lord's Supper. Also, I'll be pushing it from now until then. Listen, uh, early voting starts October the 13th. And I want us to flood the polls. Amen. It doesn't matter where you live. Flood the polls. If you're in Sunnyside, get over to Mount Hebron. We're hoping to put a big function on going on over there. Or if you want to go to uh, Toyota Center, even BBVA uh, down on emancipation. You can go there, but I want everyone on the first day of early voting to flood the polls. You get down there, get in line, let it be so many folk in line that we ain't got to keep it open until after 10, 11 o'clock. If you're in line before 7, you can vote. So we want to flood the polls. We don't, we don't want any, any mistakes. Huh? And we don't want to leave any question or any doubts, huh? That we're going to exercise our right to vote, all right? So let's do that. I'll be pushing that, and I'll be sharing with preachers and pastors across uh, the city and across the country, along with others, to get out on the first day. Amen. Early vote.